political campaigns. We have our nice little kissing, angry, donkey elephant thing here. I couldn't quite figure out what that was. Um, but this is what this is why we have political campaigns. So you have these two cavemen, right? What you mean, Van? You could ignore that part. I couldn't get rid of it. So you have two cavemen, right? And you have a you have a disagreement between cavemen. One caveman, Og, says, we should march across river, go river, mini flower on other side, use flower, smoke flower, whatever, you know? <laughs> and the other caveman is like, no, stay here, mini big deer, club deer, use deer for make helmet and hat, that sort of thing, right? So they're going to have a disagreement. Now, what do the cavemen do? Well, they just club each other in the head until somebody wins. They're not going to debate, they're not going to argue, it's whoever's bigger is going to hit the other guy. Um, but eventually, <laughs> someone came up with this crazy idea that maybe we could debate and discuss which decision we should make, right? We can actually have a discussion about it, and we can both say to the rest of the people in the tribe or the clan or the troop or whatever else it is, I think it's a better idea to stay here. I think it's a better idea to go over the river. And as they have that discussion, believe it or not, that's kind of what a campaign is you got two different sides that are marketing their particular idea to get people to listen to them. Okay? Now, the effectiveness of a campaign has to do with a lot of different factors. Um, and I'll probably call people out by shirts. Young lady who has the greeny brownie shirt. Yes. Um, give, me a, give me a slogan for some product that you consume. Oh, God. Um. Unless you like buy all your clothes at the free trade store, in which case that wouldn't be the case. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> I have a poor memory. Um, <laughs> just a random one. Any, it doesn't even have to be something you consume. I don't know. Okay, that's, that's good. Uh, what's your name? Jason. Yes, Jason. They're Flight. great. Huh? Frosted Flakes. <laughs> what do you say? They're, 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 they're great, they're exactly. <laughs> Frosted Flakes, right? The incredibly enthusiastic anthropomorphic tiger. Right? He jumps up and down, it's really exciting to get a bunch of little kids to eat like sugary looking scabs, right? I, I'm not a cereal fan, really, really not. Like, I was like a breakfast and, you know, eggs and pancakes kid from birth. Um, but yeah, you know, those kinds of marketing things, if they stick in your head, you know, that's sort of what these campaigns are supposed to do. Now, one of the main elements of a political campaign and why do we have them, okay? The first question is why do we have political campaigns? Now, I mentioned before it's because you have the cavemen argument. But the other reason we have political campaigns now has to do with one of the most offensively obnoxious episodes of South Park. Now, I am, and you all will figure this out probably fairly quickly, I, I don't edit myself a lot. I use whatever kind of language I want. Um, none of my students have any idea how I vote one way or another. I will talk about pot smoking hippies on the left and crazy white ring teabaggers on the right. I don't care. Um, because I work for both, right? And as an analyst, you're supposed to be as objective as possible. Um, so I can say objectively speaking that I really don't like South Park. I find it obnoxious and abrasive and racist and sexist. But it's funny. Um, and so how many of you all remember this episode? Anybody here actually remember this episode? It's an episode from a couple years ago. And it was a reflection of how frustrated everybody was with how banal and uninteresting the candidates are. So they actually had a presidential debate between a douche and a turd sandwich. Okay? Now, as crass as that is, it's a reflection of why we have political campaigns, right? Because most people look at this stuff and they're like, I don't care about either of these candidates. Neither one of these, this man, this woman, neither one of these people seems remotely interesting to me. So if you don't dress them up, it's just a turd sandwich. Okay? If you dress it up, it might be a tastier turd sandwich. Okay? And that's what your campaign is going to do. Now, what's a campaign made up of? Message, advertising, the candidate, positioning, and technology. Those are the elements that you have to have for any effective political campaign. Anybody who tells you otherwise can write their own book. Um, okay, so your message. Your message is basically why anybody should vote for you, okay? Why anybody should vote for you. Now, um, it's interesting. There's this show, I, I, all these sort of pop, I teach pop culture class because that's where stuff comes from. Um, so I like this, this show I really like called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, right? <laughs> Love that show. And, and there's this great episode where there's the character, Dennis, who's like the sort of Lothario of the show, has a thing called the Dennis system. 
he has like this whole explanation as to like how you pick up women and blah 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 blah. Um, and the core of that, I was actually watching that with some friends of mine. And the core of that is, you know, he talks about how you have to like elicit sympathy or get these sort of attitudes or beliefs. The core of that is you have to give somebody a reason why they want to bother with you. Everyone in this room knows how to do that. Okay, if you've ever tried to pick somebody up or turn someone down or get your parents to do something for you or get your parents to not do something, you've created a message. Okay, and the better your message sticks, the more effective you're going to be at getting what you want done. Okay, so for example, what's your name? Derek. Derek. All right, Derek. Um, you. I'm your dad, Derek. Okay, <laughs> just theoretically. I'm not old enough to be your father, but just let's just imagine I was. So. Um, <laughs> but, uh, all right, so Derek, you want the car, and not the crappy Honda Civic, right? You want my car. You want my car, which is like a really nice Honda Civic or something. I don't know. You, you want my nice car, okay? My Prius. <laughs> explain, explain to me. Give me an elevator speech here. You got like 15, 20 seconds. Tell me why I should let you drive my car, son. Why should I let you drive my car? You should let me drive your car because I have to go to a formal fundraiser where I have to drive a car in front of other people and I would like to drive a nicer looking car for the evening. So if you let me borrow your car. What does that do for me, son? What does that do for me? I'll, 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 I'll do extra chores. Oh, see, see, see. That's, 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 that's the wrong message. But it's good, Derek. It's a good start. It's a good start. This is the mistake that most people have when they create a message. Okay? Your message, there's two parts to it. Number one, you have to be able to convince people why you deserve their attention, okay? And then usually if you're really smart, your message also tells them why they don't want to vote for the other person, okay? So for example, one of the best campaign messages I ever heard years ago, campaign slogan slash message, was a guy named Chris Van Hollen when I was working uh, in the Maryland Senate. And his, anybody here from Maryland? Okay, oh cool. Uh, what part? Baltimore. Oh, okay, good. So you, you heard of Van Hollen. Oh, you're going to like the part where I start talking about the wire then. Um, so anyway, um, so Chris Van Hollen has this campaign slogan, and his slogan was, Chris Van Hollen, the candidate for people who care about the issues. Right? Now, why does that work? Well, number one, if you don't vote for Chris Van Hollen, then what does that mean? You don't care about the issues. You're, you're dumb. I mean... What's wrong with you? You don't care about the, Nobody wants to be the person that doesn't. Now, we really don't care about the issues, but you don't want to be the person that doesn't care about the issues, right? So the slogan works on two different levels. Number one, it's telling you right up front, well, the reason that you vote for Van Hollen is because it serves your needs, right? He's going to care about and do something about issues. And two, at the same time, the other woman that he's running against clearly does not, okay? So that's message. Next, advertising. Well, advertising is how you get your message out there. Okay? That's your commercials, that's your ads, that's your, you know, gray screens. You know, Senator X likes clubbing baby seals on the weekend. Is that what you believe in? You know, those ads that you guys see all the time. Okay? Um, that's advertising. And sometimes it's about clubbing baby seals, and sometimes it's about saving baby seals. You know, whatever works. Uh, next you have the candidate. We're going to spend a bit of time talking about the candidate later on. But the candidate, the thing about it is, you know, it takes, it takes a lot of work to develop a good candidate and find a good candidate. Um, <coughs> I have a classic example. Uh, what's your name? Alex. Alex. Okay, Alex. Uh, were you old enough to vote in the last election? Yes, I was. Okay. Um, if you had to do a 10-hour road trip, right? Like, let's say you guys were where do you guys go for, like, spring break or stuff? You can't drive anywhere from here, can you? I don't think. Yeah, you have to fly. Okay. So let's just say you all were broke and you had to drive. Okay? You're going to drive to Virginia Beach, so it's like 14 hours, right? If you had to be trapped in a car for 14 hours with Barack Obama or John McCain, who would you rather be trapped in a car with? Barack Obama. Right. right. Now, why? Because he is way more energetic and interesting and a person, better person I can imagine to talk to. Right. Probably a lot more fun, right? John McCain might spend the whole time trying to change